So trypanosomes are hemoflagellates that reside in peripheral blood and tissue of their host. So if you get a question about hemoflagellates, definitely you are supposed to mention the trypanosomes also. They cause many diseases in human as well as cattle. So they are pathogenic to human as well as to the cattle which is in the human vicinity. So this is how they are classified on the basis where they are causing the disease. So in human trypanosomes, examples are Trypanosoma cruzi, Trypanosoma bruzi. Trypanosoma bruzi is having many different subspecies. So Trypanosoma bruzi rhodesians and the Trypanosoma bruzi gambians. These are human pathogens. Then there is Trypanosoma rangeli. And in cattle pathogens, they are Trypanosoma bruzi bruzi. As you can see, this is another subspecies of Trypanosoma bruzi species. Then there is Trypanosoma ivansi, Trypanosoma luisi and Trypanosoma equiperdum. So first of all we will be learning about Trypanosoma cruzi. So if you look at the history of Trypanosoma cruzi, it is the causative agent of South American Trypanosomiasis or Chagas disease. Chagas disease is another frequently asked short note. So just learn carefully about this. It was first discovered by the Brazilian scientist Carlos Chagas, so after whose name it, the disease is given this name. He isolated from redwood bug and blood of infected monkeys and that's why this condition is named as Chagas disease. He named the parasite as Trypanosoma cruzi after his, to honor his guide Mr. Oswald Cruz. So this is Mr. Oswald Cruz and his student Carlos Chagas. And this is the distribution of Trypanosoma cruzi human infection. So in the areas of this yellow color prevalence is less than 1% up going up to the Central America, lower of the Central America and this pink color, a major, a major area of South America comes under where the prevalence is more than 1%. So learning about the morphology, Trypanosoma cruzi exist in two host one is vertebrate host another one is vector so in vertebrate host it exists mainly in two forms that is tripomastigot form and amastigot form and in insect vector which is in this case is redwood bug it exists as all four forms which have been described for this particular parasite that is tripomastigot amastigot promastigot and epimastigot what does it mean we will see Number one is tripomastigot. This is the main form. It's a spindle shaped as you can see. It's moving like this, like a spindle. It is seen in the peripheral blood of the infected patients in two forms. One could be a long, long slender form and another one is short stubby form. So if you see in this structure, there is a nucleus and this kinetoplast is rising from posterior side. So it consists of a central nucleus and the large kinetoplast which is situated posteriorly this will be called as posterior end from which a flagellum originates traverses the entire body whole body as an undulating membrane the area which comes out from the main body is called undulating membrane and it comes out from the anterior end as a free flagellum so at the last point is free flagellum this form does not multiply often asked as a multiple choice question so this is how they are seen in peripheral blood, the stained films as you can see spindle shaped central nucleus and the, from the anterior end a flagellum is coming out and this is an electron micrograph, micrograph, the last part is flagellum and this part as you can see is undulating membrane. A mastigot form, a mastigot form means where the flagella is not present. So it is found inside uh, cells of striated muscles which could be either skeletal or cardiac muscle, nervous tissue and the reticuloendothelial cell. It is round to oval, no spindle shape, having a large nucleus in comparison to spindle shaped one, rod shaped kinetoplast and exoneme but no flagella. There is no flagella coming out of the main body and this is the multiplying form of parasite. This is the life cycle of Trypanosoma cruzi. We will start from humans and then we will see how it moves from vector. So in 
in humans introduction of infective forms takes place by number one either a feces of redovid bug or triatomid bug then blood transfusion laboratory cultures for the workers who are working in laboratory congenital infection and transplantation by either of these five ways the parasite gains entry into the human now once it reaches inside the human the trypomastigotes circulate in blood they do the tissue invasion and multiplication while this multiplication takes place in tissue some trypomastigotes are still present in blood now this when these trypomastigotes are present in blood this triatomid bug takes a blood meal so the trypomastigote will be taken by the bug where they multiply in the hind gut of the bug and ultimately by all either of these method it once again reaches the human so the cycle becomes complete so trypanosoma cruzi passes its life cycle in two hosts humans and vector which are redwood bug or kissing bugs or triatoman bugs or coninose bugs these are the different names by which they can be asked in a multiple choice question also so infective form is metacyclic trypomastigote whenever you are talking about parasite always mention the infective form so metacyclic trypomastigote form is the infective form which is found in the feces of redwood bugs mode of transmission it gets infection when the contaminated with redwood redwood bugs feces containing infective form trypanosoma cruzi can also be transmitted by the blood transfusion organ transplantation from mother to fetus or very rarely by ingestion or contamination contaminated food or drink and most importantly by laboratory accidents all these methods have been cited in literature but they are very rare or rare we can say majority is by this bug and its feces so this is redwood bug on the left side a large picture and this is a real time picture where a bug you can see a bug it's passing feces and when this feces is deposited on the human skin sooner or later the trypomastigotes are going to get gain entry into the human <clears throat> these are the different stages of redwood bug starting from its egg and different developmental stages on a measurement scale so development in men the trypomastigote does not divide in the blood but carries the infection to the all parts of body the amastigote form multiplies within virtually any cell preferring cells of mesenchymal origin such as reticuloendothelial myocardial adipose and neuroglial cells in these tissues the amastigotes multiply by binary fission forming a cyst like mass of growth known as pseudo cyst many amastigotes within the pseudo cyst are transformed into motile c shaped non multiplying trypomastigote forms and on rupture of these pseudo cyst the trypomastigotes are liberated in blood so trypomastigote amastigote once again trypomastigotes development in redwood bugs trypomastigotes are ingested by redwood bugs as it obtains a blood meal from that human the trypomastigotes transforms into an epimastigote which multiplies in the posterior portion of the midgut and after 8 to 10 days this metacyclic trypomastigotes develop from the epimastigotes and are passed into the feces and which infect the human when rubbed into the insects puncture wound or rubbed onto the exposed mucous membrane clinical disease the incubation period how how does it present into the humans the incubation period in humans is about 7 to 14 days in children younger than 5 years the disease is seen in its severest form whereas in older children and adult the disease is milder and is commonly diagnosed in the subacute or chronic form rather than in the acute form the clinical syndrome associated with chagas disease can be broken down into early acute intermediate and chronic stages so four stages of disease presentation early disease a localized inflammatory reaction of variable intensity may ensue at the infection site so that at that particular site an erythematous substance nodule this is called chagoma seen most frequently on the face 
The chagoma is painful and may take two to three months to subside. In early stages of infection, amestigotes or tripomestigotes may be aspirated from the chagoma. This is the chagoma. As you can see, the eye of this child is swollen. Same in this adult patient also. Acute stage. Early stage transforms into the acute stage. So with this, we will wind up for the today's class and we will continue the presentation in the next class. Thank you.